from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contributions from three donors. The first are Rita Kelly and family from Baden, Ontario, in loving memory of their husband, father and grandfather, Keith Kelly. May he have eternal rest. The second is an anonymous donor from Ottawa, Ontario, in thanksgiving for blessings received for herself and her family, for healing of a recent diagnosis and good health for the deceased members of her family, the souls in purgatory, and for world peace. The third are Anne and Lawrence Hill from Vancouver, British Columbia, for the spiritual growth, health, and protection for themselves and their family, and for the repose of the souls of their mothers, Vera Hill and Anna Chong Liu. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the feast of the visitation of Mary to her cousin Elizabeth. As we celebrate this feast, we are reminded that we each of us need to care for one another. Let us ask God's mercy for the moments where we have failed to show our love and affection for each other. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord, have mercy. You came to call the sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who while the Blessed Virgin Mary was carrying your son in her womb, inspired her to visit Elizabeth, Grant us, we pray, that faithful to the promptings of the Spirit, we may magnify your greatness with the Virgin Mary at all times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Zephaniah. Sing aloud, O daughter Zion. Shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has turned away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall fear disaster no more. On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Do not fear, O Zion. Do not let your hands grow weak. 
The Lord your God is in your midst, a warrior who gives victory. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exult over you with loud singing, as on a day of festival. I will remove disaster from you, so that you will not bear reproach for it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, 
the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. The Lord's mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. The Lord has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with Elizabeth about three months and then returned to her home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. To better appreciate the feast of the visitation of Mary to her cousin Elizabeth, we have to allow ourselves to enter into the scene. The scenario is Mary has been told that she would bear a son who will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. I'm not sure how much Mary understood of that message, but learning that her cousin Elizabeth is pregnant in her old age, she goes in haste immediately to serve her. Pope Francis, in one of his daily homilies reflecting on this passage, states, serving others is a Christian sign. Even though Mary is being told that she would be the mother of the Most High, she reaches out in service to her cousin. Another aspect we see in the meeting of Mary and Elizabeth is an element of joy that is shared between them. The joy is particularly expressed in their conversation between Mary and Elizabeth, and particularly in the Magnificat. Pope Francis adds in the same homily, Christians with the grimace or disgruntled expression on their faces, sad Christians are a very ugly thing. They are not fully Christian. They think they are Christians, but they are not fully so. So all these things gives us an invitation to reflect on this feast and to learn for our own selves. So what does the visit of Mary to Elizabeth teach us given our situation of life? It has been more than a year where almost all of us have been stuck, not able to travel and visit others. To the situation of ours, the visitation of Mary could come as a rub in the wounds in our inability to move around. But when we take time to understand the concept and the outcome of Mary's visit, the visitation of Mary could be an inspiration for us, even given our situation. As I mentioned, mentioned earlier, the two aspects of Mary's visit are that of service and spreading joy. Even though we are not able to visit our family members and friends, we are not able to travel to places, let us not forget the element of service to one another. Modern technology has allowed us to be close to each other even though we are physically staying apart. Modern technology has given a chance to be in touch let us use them. Let us continue to care for each other. Like Mary's visit, let us visit people through a video call, a voice call, or send a text or an email, or send a physical card. Let people know that we care for them. 
Everyone is in need of our support. A phone call, a text, an email can make a difference. Our service to others can become a source of joy for them. Service always leads to joy. With our present situation, the road that we travel may seem long. Particularly our journey for more than a year hasn't been easy. But that's where I think Mary comes as a model for each of us. The visit to Elizabeth, in a way, is a starting point of her journey. She will take a lot of risk in her life, like her journey to Bethlehem, where she gives birth to Jesus, then her flight to Egypt, and after a few years going back from Egypt to Nazareth. And we cannot forget one in particular, the most difficult of all, as she followed her son on his journey to Calvary. Like Mary's journey, we all of us are traveling to places we may not understand, to destinations we cannot see. But we ask Mary to help guide us on our way. As we celebrate this Eucharist, let us pray to have the trust in God that we need to travel whatever road we must take, just as Mary did. Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions. Let's pray for ourselves that we may become the messengers of joy to this troubled world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our brothers and sisters who are hurting due to loneliness and being alone, that we as Christian community reach them out and may they feel the presence of God in them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in the daily TV Mass community who have asked to be included in our prayer intentions book, especially those asking for peace in their family, we pray to the Lord. Let us take a moment to bring to God our own individual needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us make all these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Yes. Blessed be God forever. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May our offering of this saving sacrifice be acceptable to your majesty, O Lord, as you are pleased to accept the charity of the most blessed mother of your only begotten son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation to praise your mighty deeds in the exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo her thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you looked on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us through her, the author of our salvation, your son, Jesus Christ. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim.
you are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life on the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You, Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you. Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us join together in this prayer to St. Joseph. Hail, guardian of the Redeemer, spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary. To you, God entrusted his only son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a father and guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy and courage and defend us from every evil amen let us pray may your church proclaim your greatness o lord for you have done great things for your faithful and as saint john the baptist leapt with the joy when he first sensed the hidden presence of christ so may your church rejoice to receive in this sacrament the same ever-living Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. With may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Thanks. Our thanks to our donors for the gift of this Mass.